than Gordon Ramsay, right? Let's not let's take grandma off the equation. Gordon Ramsay, he has people prepare meals and they do all the measuring. And then he gets it and he's like, this tastes like shit. Bloody hell. This tastes like shit. Like, why is that? They've lost the soul that is required to make the, the, the food that hits you in the soul. Now I want to get into this 10 ways to cook up beets more consistently. This is a question that I find rears its head up in many different ways. So I compiled a list of 10 things that, you know, some things you probably heard before. I know you've heard before. And then some things are very um, Curtis King like. For those who don't know what that means, you'll see that in a second. <laughs> <laughs> be clear on why you even make beats. Why do you make beats? Well, I make beats to sell them. Well, why do you make beats to sell them? Because I need to make money. Well, here's the issue with when you say that to yourself, because if you say I'm only making beats to sell beats so I can make a living to make money, then your brain starts to go into its database and say, couldn't we find an easier way to make money than this? Right. Why are we putting ourselves through all of this stress? And I know that's not what you want. I know that you would rather make make music and, and and have that make you money. But the truth of the matter is your brain is going to start to dig and try to figure out all the different ways and different reasons why you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. So I think it's important to identify why you want to make beats, because that is the DNA of the, the motivation that you're seeking. If you are doing something and don't know the purpose of why you're doing it, if I told you to just get up out of your seat right now and look into a corner of the room and hold your nose and pull one of your legs up behind your butt and stand on one leg for 10 minutes, the first question you would have is why? Why in the hell am I doing that? That sounds silly. Well, a lot of us do things that are not as obviously silly, but still pull us away from why our initial why even is. Soon as I get to a place where I feel like, what is the purpose of this beat? This beat is not that good. I'm not feeling it. I don't feel encouraged by it. I return back to that why this experience alone, no matter what the result of the beats is, this experience alone is a blessing. Restrict your session times. This is the purpose, the foundation of the 10 minute beat challenge. The 10 minute beat challenge is a way for you to go through stress training as a music producer. You put 10 minutes on the clock and you try your best to make a complete beat so that you get in the habit of making decisions without thinking, taking chances and risk without second guessing. Your brain works a lot differently under pressure. Your brain, when it realizes that it only has a short window of time to do things, you leave yourself less time to second guess things. When you restrict your timing, it doesn't give your brain an opportunity to do too much talking to you, too much thinking or that part of your brain that does all that overthinking. Study what has worked for you. Many times we're frustrated that we can't make beats as great as the ones we've already done and we stop there. But you literally have the stems the project files, and the DNA for what made that work. There's a few different factors I want you to pay attention to as you study your beats. You can make it five beats. I think five would give you a really accurate number to draw an average from. And what you want to do is study specific things about them. First thing, count the average amount of instruments you used in your beats because it helps you define your goals as you sit down and make beats. I want you to note not only how long those sessions were, and obviously if you have the beat timer plug in, that'll allow you to time your sessions, but I want you to note the time of the day that you cook those beats up. There's something called the sleep chronotype. Basically has a schedule that meets you at your most productive. Some people schedule, they're, they're most productive at midnight. Some people are supremely productive at nine in the morning. And I'm not saying that you're gonna own only make your best beats in these hours, but I'm saying that you want to look into it if there's a pattern there. I am I am a pattern tracker. I love to track patterns and see if there's something that's going on here that's telling me a different story that I could not see before. Use loops for inspiration and primers so that you can cook up beats more consistently. If you're not already using, if you already use them, you already know the benefit of this, but if you're not already using them, really look into them because it's going to give you an opportunity to consistently draw from places that you necessarily wouldn't draw from because you didn't create that. Keep a level head about your beats, no matter how good or bad they are. I think so many times we put an emphasis on this string of beats is the worst beats that I've made. I'm having a bad week. I'm having a bad month. Then we'll do the opposite when we have like, yo, I'm on fire. Nobody can do anything to me. Nobody could even touch me. We put so much emphasis on the good and the bad that 
we really shouldn't. We really should just look at this as, look, it's always good, even when it's not its best. It's always good because I have an opportunity to cook. It's always good because I'm here. I think the ultimate goal should be to be unmoved, not emotionally dormant, but to realize that I made a good beat. That's fire. All right, let's work on something else. You know what? This is not my best beat, but damn. That what I did with those hi-hats, probably something I'd do again. Try your best to keep a very level head about it because no matter what, after all, this is, this is one beat of a million that you will have the pleasure to make. Record your voice notes and actually use them. I hear producers when I suggest, hey, do you record voice notes into your phone, right? Yeah, I do that all the time. Do you use them? I mean, I use it before like one or two times. No, use the damn voice notes. What's the purpose of these ideas if you're not using the voice notes? For those of you that are using the voice notes, good for you. And if if it doesn't sound good the first time you try to recreate that in an actual beat, that's fine. You always have it to go back to. Hyper focus on one subsection of your beat making process. Melodic loops, drum loops, etc. Leave a little for the next day. So one thing that I always suggest, every day that you're sitting down to make beats does not have to be dedicated to just making beats. You could have a melody loop making day and you'll probably get a lot more done when you hyper focus on one subcategory of beat making. Creatively, I got to tell you, when I have days like that where I make nothing but melodic loops, I feel like I walk away from those sessions a lot more full. I feel like I walk away from those sessions feeling like, yeah, I got the most out of my day. That's the whole point of doing the work we do. We want to be able to walk away from there and say, yeah, yeah, okay, I did my job. I, I did what I was supposed to do. I got the most, I squeezed the most juice that I could out of this day. Collaborate with producers just like you. I think many times producers, because we have access to any producer they can think of with an email, with a manager or somebody to reach out to or somebody that you've always respected, because you have access to them, you feel like that's the collaboration that you need to get done first. And that's not the collaboration you need to get done first. The one you need to get done first is the one that is excited about working with you. The one that is looking for you, the one that is already local to you, the one that is probably the closest to you, the ones that are already tuning into what you're doing. Collaborate amongst your own community first. Build that up because what's going to happen is that when you want to make beats more consistently, it's not always a solo job. It's a team effort. So involve other people so that they can be a part of this team experience. Separate your research time from your creation time. I think so many times when we're sitting down to make music, we have our mind set on, I'm going to make music. But then we allow the distractions to distract us. And when we allow that to happen, we end up going down a rabbit hole. And it's a rabbit hole that I am not one that is above that for sure. It happens to me, especially when I'm sitting here mixing or doing something that's not necessarily my favorite thing to do. It happens. I'll get on my phone and I'll check check one DM or I check one email. Email is the worst for me. Email will literally lead me into one place that leads me into another place that leads me to another place that leads me to checking the website, changing the website that leads me to checking Stripe and checking PayPal that leads me. To, it just will lead you down a rabbit hole. So it's important that you separate your creation time from your research time, from your information retrieval time, from whatever you want to consider time away from music. It's important that you separate the two. I will turn my phone on airplane mode when I know that I'm mixing because there's just way too many distractions. Even right now, I had a text message come through and I'm like, I got to put on airplane mode because of our experience right now to stay fully invested into this experience and focus. It's important for me to shut those things off and tell myself, tell my brain, look, it is creation time. It is not research time, right? If I do not know how to do something, what would I have done if I didn't have internet, right? Sometimes our luxuries end up being our, 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 our biggest obstacle. Cook beats like grandma. Oh, Curtis, you back in your Curtis back. Cook beats like your grandmother. Every grandmother is not the same, but there's a lot of grandmother, grandmothers that are very similar. And a few things I remember about my grandmother cooking, especially during holiday seasons. So during Thanksgiving, my grandmother would get in that, she would get in that kitchen and she would start preparing things. She would start boiling things. She would start putting a turkey in the oven. She would start preparing all these different things. If you walked in there, it would look like it's disorganized. Pots over here and pans over here. You got mixing bowls. I don't think I ever saw my grandmother use a measuring cup. She would take whatever she was using, salt, seasoned salt, pepper, you know what I'm saying, and salt bay that. She would just, a little bit of that, a little bit of that. Grandma, why you ain't using a measuring glass? I don't need no measuring glass. I got my hand. I know exactly how to put it. I know what it, I know what it's supposed to taste like. I know what, I know how much to put in there. I've been doing this for years. It looks chaotic, but you look at the end result of what's on the table and you're like, good God, I don't care how it was made. This looks 
delicious. I think there's something to learn from that for us as producers, because I think so many producers don't cook up their beats in the same natural and home style way that grandmother would. So you think about a producer that cooks up a beat, they sit down there and they're sitting in front of their DAW and their DAW is obviously their, their cooking utensils, their, their MIDI keyboard, their mounts. They try to decide, okay, well, well you know, very similar. We try to decide what meal we're going to cook. Okay, we're going to cook up a, a UK drill or we're going to cook up an R and B. Well, I need these ingredients. And then once you get the ingredients, you start pulling out the measuring cup. Well, how much low end should I add to the, wait a minute, what are we doing? How much snap should I add to this snare? Wait a minute, what are we doing? How many, like, what is the correct type of hi-hats? Wait, wait, what are we doing? How do we get so detached from the natural faith that we're supposed to have in our craft? And for many of you, maybe this doesn't relate because you're still very early in your journey. You got to get your, your experience in, but how do we get to a point where we become so so, oh, no, no, no. I must make sure that I measure the correct amount of EQ and the correct amount of cutting of the low end. Even Gordon Ramsay, right? Let's not let's take grandma off the equation. Gordon Ramsay, he has people prepare meals and they do all the measuring. And then he gets it and he's like, this tastes like shit. Bloody hell. This tastes like shit. Like, why is that? They've lost the soul that is required to make the, the, the food that hits you in the soul. The overall goal of this really is for you to just trust in yourself. Trust that even when things are not going according to plan, they're going somewhere. And if you trust your ears and you know what sounds good and what doesn't sound good, allow the journey to happen. And if the end result is not quite what you like, there's a button in every DAW that when you hit file, drop down menu, and it says new project, open up a new one. The Curtis King Podcast a podcast for music producers, thinkers, and creatives alike. Listen for a new episode every Monday at thecurtiskingpodcast.com.